Hello and welcome back to Redirecting. Now, in light of the, I just did a video where I was talking about the Cracker Barrel incident. Now, in light of the situation, um, the family has come out and stated that they are praying for the shooter. I want to talk about how our prayers is what keeps racism alive. And you may not understand that right away, but I'm going to hopefully bring some clarification to exactly what I mean when I say that. Our prayers keep racism alive because it's not that the Most High is answering the prayer and blessing the, the, the killers that we're talking about. That's not what's happening. Okay. What he is doing when, because the Bible says you reap what you sow, right? Okay. I for an eye, two for two, it says a number of different things. So what happens when we send up these prayers where the most high may have had judgment slated for that person, the most high may have said, okay, you did this crime. Um, this is what's going to happen to you. But because you have black people who pray for these people, okay, that just stops whatever punishment was coming. So it's not that our prayer is being answered by the most high. He said, okay, I will bless the shooter because you love him so much and you forgive him for killing your loved one or hurting your loved one. I'm going to grant your request. That is not what's happening. What's happening is the fact that our prayers are stopping the judgment because we exonerate these people. We tell them we love them. We tell them we forgive them and we hope the best for them. We, we hope that they can sleep at night and that they don't have to suffer thinking about what they've done. To me, that's some foolish mess. What the, what do you mean that you hope that they don't have to suffer? That they're not suffering thinking about what they've done. They did what they wanted to do. Trust me, at nighttime, they are not pondering and crying and weeping, saying, oh, I wish I didn't shoot that black person. That, that's not what's happening, family. Something has happened to our minds to where we just feel so righteous on the inside when we forgive and love people who have told us time and time again that they can't stand us. Okay, and, and yes, I do have a rebuking tone. And uh, some of you have come and said that um, you don't like the rebuking tone. I'm sorry, family. We are past the age of softness. Okay, I understand that uh, some of our people just don't know. But in terms of racism, what is it not to know? It's been alive and well for 400 years. It's not that our people don't know. They choose not to know. They choose to not think about it. They choose to not focus on it. They choose to ignore it. But when, when I speak and I talk, this is for those who want to know. If you feel that my tone is too re rebuking and it's too harsh, then maybe, maybe you should look at videos where I'm talking about gardening and things of that nature, because we have to keep it real on this channel. We are in war family. Okay. The Bible talks about how people wouldn't be able to stand sound doctrine and that they are going to say, speak unto us soft things. So it was prophesied that people would say that this is too rebuking. Listen, family, I'm pretty sure that Harriet Tubman was not telling people, hey, do you all want to go with me? I'm going to lead us to safety. She was saying, look, if you're behind too scared to move about and try to get yourself to some freedom, don't hold us back. Stay out of our way. I'm pretty sure that Harriet was not speaking soft. When you look at the face of Harriet Tubman, she, I, I don't think I've ever seen a, a, a photo with her smiling. That's a woman who was serious. She meant business and she didn't have time to play with people. I mean, it was even said that she left her husband behind. She's like, look, if you scared, I don't know the whole story about behind why her husband didn't come along, but she, I can imagine that if he were afraid to leave and scared, Harry said, okay, it's time, you know, I'm out of here. Whether you come in with us or not, bye. Again, I don't know if that's what happened. I'm just paraphrasing. If that is the case, then she had a job to do and she did it. Okay. And so. Another thing that I wanted to speak on about this is the fact that these people who do these crimes towards us, 
They're not in fear. They're not doing this stuff because they're in fear, because they're defending themselves. They are using that excuse to carry out the hatred and the violence against us that's there already. They are using this legal system that they know will favor them as an opportunity and an excuse to do what it is they want to do. And so when we pray that they um, uh, can sleep at night because they're suffering about what they've done, that's a prayer that's amiss. The Most High is not hearing that. He knows the hearts of these people. It was prophesied that they would have this perpetual hatred. You can't train hatred out of the minds of a person who feels so strongly to the point where they will shoot you in the head because you dared say anything to them about blocking an entrance. Okay, family, listen, listen, we have got to get it together mentally. First of all, going into the Cracker Barrel, there, I mean, look at the name Cracker Barrel. There have been a number of racial incidents that have happened over the years at the Cracker Barrel. We got to open up our eyes and ears to these things. We as a people have got to stop ignoring these things. We so much want to be a part of this society and be accepted by them to where we feel if we, if we just mingle and mix and do all of this, then eventually they will begin to love us. And that is not how it works. Um, I believe it was Pat Buchanan, in which there's another video I may talk about as regards to this. He says, even after 400 years, he said they came here talking about us. They came here in 1619 and they still have not fully assimilated themselves into our society. Assimilate means that we haven't fully taken on all of their customs. Now, you and I both know that we have taken on many of their customs, much of their customs. What he's saying is that we have not fully submitted to them. Who are they that we should assimilate to them in the first place? But that is how they think. That is how they think that everyone in the world is supposed to assimilate to them. Now, us complaining about it is not going to change their thinking, but what we need to do, this is how we must redirect in situations like this. We need to stop praying for these people who are hurting us. We need to start praying and asking for judgment. We need to start acknowledging what the word says. That those who do such things should be punished. This is what the word talks about. It talks about the judgment that is going to befall these nations who continue to do these things to us. And we need to say what the word says, what the Bible says. We need to start declaring his word. We need to start asking the most high to judge between us and them. We need to ask the most high to do what his word says. Your word says you reap what you sow. And so we're asking Abiyah in the, in, in these cases that these injustices happen to our people. We know what your word says, that they were going to be a whipping stick for us, a rod of iron, a rod, rod of correction. We know that it says that, but it also says that you reap what you sow. If you give out evil, evil shall return. We know that it says that too. So essentially, even though they are carrying out or fulfilling prophecy, we can still pray that the Most High judges those who have done these things to us because his word also says, I will bless those that bless you. And curse those that curse you. So we can begin to ask the Most High to do what his word says, which is curse those who curse us. And those who have been on the giving end of this punishment towards us, we can pray that the Most High will revisit their sins upon them quickly, swiftly. That is how we must redirect family. All of this nonsense about praying for people who hate you and declaring how much you love them and you, you want them to sleep. And now this is why racism stays alive because we keep it alive. We give them permission to do this by not declaring what the Bible says about these things. When we don't declare what the Bible says and we make these people feel good in their wickedness, they will continue in their wickedness towards us. Okay, with that family, I will say shalom. Be sure to ring the bell to be notified of new uploads on this channel and also comment, share, like, and subscribe.